everyone, Colty Math here. We're going to start our Algebra 1 review with the non-calculator section. So for all the problems today, you're going to see me do long division or regular multiplication by hand, and never will I pull out a calculator. Make sure that you know how to do the same. Make sure that you review how to do your multiplication, your subtraction, your addition, and your division. Okay, let's get started. First question, express the quadratic function in factored form. Factored form. There are three different examples that we're going to do this to. Factored form should look like this. You have bubbles at the end. So in each bubble, you're going to see an x value. This is our goal. Our goal is to get it to look like this. We're going to go one at a time. Grab a separate piece of paper, and we're going to start working this out. We're starting with A. Give myself some room to write. I'm going to start by rewriting the equation. 4x squared plus 17x plus 13. Okay, now when you look at this equation, if you notice that there's a number in front of x squared, we have a coefficient other than 1. We're going to do an AC method. It's called the AC method. And the way that you do it is you start by multiplying your coefficient to the x squared, which is your 4, times your C value, which is the whole number at the end. So we're going to start by multiplying 4 times 13. Now we're going to do this on the side because, remember, no calculator. So 13 times 4. 3 times 4 is 12. Carry the 1. 1 plus 1 is, I'm sorry, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So 52. Now we're going to rewrite this equation. So our equation is now going to be x squared, without the 4, plus 17x, plus 52. Now the next step, you're going to try and identify numbers that can multiply to be 52. So factors of 52 that add to be 17, positive 17 in this example. So I'm going to have 52 and my factors need to add up to 17. The one that I like to start with is 1. So 1 times 52 gives me 52. 1 plus 52, however, gives me 53. And that's not what I want. Remember, I want 17. So that's not going to work. Let's go on to the next two factors. So next number I'm going to tr try is 2. 2 times what gives me 52? If we're not sure, we're going to go ahead and do some additional division. So if I have 52, I want to divide it by 2. 2 goes into 5 twice. 2 times 2 is 4. Five. 5 minus 4 is 1. Bring down the 2. 2 goes into 12 6 times. 2 times 6 is 12. And now we're done. So 2 and 26 are factors of 52. So I'm going to go over here to my little T area. And I'm going to write 2 and 26 are factors of 52 if you multiply them together. Now if we add them, 2 plus 26 is 28. And remember, we don't want 28. We want the 17. So this is also not going to work. We have to keep going. Let's try 3. 3 times what gives us 52? Okay. Got to do more work. Some more long division. So 52 divided by 3. 3 goes into 5 once. 3 times 1 is 3. Subtract. We get 2 left over. Bring down the 2. 3 goes into 22. 7 times max. 3 times 7 is 21. So now we're going to have 22 minus 21, and we get 1 left over. Now the 3 can't go into the 1, so our remainder is 1. We're never going to deal with anything that has a remainder as one of the two factors. So we're not even going to try out the 3. It's not one of our factors to 52. Let's keep going. 4. 
So now I'm going to do this again and figure out 4 times what other number gives me 52. So 52 divided by 4. 4 goes into 5 once. 4 times 1 is 4. Subtract that where you have 1 left over. Bring down the 2. 4 goes into 12 three times. 3 times 4 is 12. And it's perfect. So 4 and 13 are our factors. Go back over to your T. And now 4 times 13 are the two factors of 52 we're looking at now. 4 plus 13, that's 17. Now remember, we want 17. We want the number in front of the X. So I like that. That's good. So I'm going to use 4 and 13 in my bubbles. So now let's get to the bubbles. Starting off my bubbles, I'm going to put them down. I'm going to throw the X in there. And now in my first bubble, it's going to be my first factor, a positive 4. And my second bubble goes the second factor, the 13. And now you're not done. Because remember, we can't just get rid of that coefficient of 4 that we started with. We have to bring it in. Now is when we bring it in. So we bring it in by dividing both of these factors that we got by 4. Only one of them is going to divide evenly. So let's see what happens. Okay, 4 divided by 4, that does go in evenly. 4 divided by 4 is 1. So we're just going to leave that as a 1, bring down the x plus the 1, and close the bubble. We're done with that factor. Now the second one, 13 does not go, 4 does not go into 13 evenly. You can't divide 13 by 4 and get a whole number. So when that happens, you're going to take the 4, you're going to bring it in front of x. So now your second bubble is going to look like 4x plus 13, since 13 couldn't be divided. This is our final answer in factored form. And if you work this backwards, and now you foiled it, you multiplied everything, you are going to go back to your original quadratic function, which is 4x squared plus 17x plus 13. Okay, let's take a look. We're done with the first problem. Let's keep it moving. Next one, 3x squared plus 11x plus 6. Going back over here, I'm now going to erase this, and we're going to try the next problem. Okay, I'm back. So our next problem is 3x squared plus 11x plus 6. Now again, I notice that I have a coefficient to the x squared that's larger than 1. I'm going to take that 3. I'm going to multiply it by my c value of 6. And now I'm going to rewrite the equation. x squared, getting rid of the 3, plus 11x, plus 3 times 6, which is 18. Now remember what we did last time. We're going to find out factors of 18 that add to be positive 11. Set up my t. So the first factor I'm going to use is 1. 1 times 18 gives me 18. When I add 1 plus 18, I get 19. That's not what I want. So let's keep thinking. Let's move on to 2. 2 times 9 gives me 18. 2 plus 9, that's 11. That works. That's what I want. I wanted 11. So we're going to use those two factors and start setting up our bubbles. Throw in the x. And now the first factor is 2, positive, so I'm going to put plus 2. If it was a negative, I would have put minus 2. And the second factor is 9. Now we're not done. This is when we bring back the 3. So we're going to divide both of these factors by 3 and see which one will divide evenly. Now look at the first one. 2 divided by 3, that does not divide evenly. You don't get a whole number. So we're going to bring the 3 to the front. 
So now our final answer for that first bubble is 3x plus 2. The second bubble, 9 does get divided by 3 evenly. You get 3. So start setting up that bubble, x plus 3. And we're done. Let's go on to our next one. Our next one is 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. So I'm going to go to my board here. I'm going to erase it, and then we'll get started. Okay, so C. 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. Okay, notice again we have a coefficient x squared that's larger than 1. So we're going to start by multiplying it by the C and rewriting our function. So x squared plus 7x plus 6. Now the next step, we try to figure out which two factors will multiply to 6, but add to be positive 7. So this is when you create your T. So we have two factors of 6. Let's start with 1. 1 times 6 gives me 6. Add them together. 1 plus 6 gives me 7. Well, that's what I want. I want the positive 7. That's good. So I'm going to use those two factors. Real quick, those are the first ones we tried. Start setting up the bubble. X in both. And now we're going to put in the plus 1 for the first bubble. The plus 6 for the second bubble. Not done. This is when we bring back the 2. The 2 from the beginning. Divide both of your factors by 2. And now let's see which one divides evenly. Now for the first one, 1 does not divide by 2 evenly. So instead, we're going to bring that 2 to the front. So now we have 2x plus 1. For the second bubble, 6 divided by 2 does give you a whole number. It gives you 3. So I'm going to bring down the rest. And this is our final answer. Okay, so when you have a coefficient to x squared that's larger than 1, you're going to start by multiplying the a times the c value. Then you do what you would normally do if you didn't have a larger number than 1 for your x squared coefficient, which is trying to figure out two factors of your c value that add to be your b value. Normally, this would be our final answer if we didn't have a coefficient of 2. But we did, so that's when we start dividing out that 2 at the end. So we've done three problems. If you know that this is something you're still struggling with, put a note on it and make sure that you ask your teacher. Okay, so we finished C. Let's go on to number 2. Rewrite the expression in radical form. Radical form. Let's talk about that before we start doing some problems. So radical form means you're going to have a radical, also known as a square root, and sometimes you'll see numbers on the outside, and you'll see things underneath the radical, sometimes letters, sometimes numbers. Now let's look at one example to see what we would do, and then start doing A, B, and C. If you have an x value that has an exponent that's a fraction, so for example, 2 over 7. The way that you're going to turn this into radical form is you're going to bring down the 2 and you're going to send the 7 to the outside of your radical. So rewriting this, it's going to look like big radical symbol. The 7 got brought to the outside. The x is going to go underneath the radical. And the 2 that we said we're going to bring down becomes the exponent. So this is rewriting x to the 2 sevenths power as a radical. Now there is one radical that you're going to see pretty often. And that comes from an x value, or any variable, that's raised to the 1 half power. Reviewing what I just went over, I'm going to bring the 1 down. I'm going to bring the 2 to the outside. 
So rewriting this with a big radical, I have the 2 on the outside. I have the x underneath raised to the first power. We do not normally write the 1 or the 2. Normally, you're just going to see your answer as square root of x. No 1 and no 2 on the outside. So just know that anytime you see a radical like this, with a variable or a whole number underneath. That means that that number or that variable was raised to the one-half power. Just something to keep in mind. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with our choices. I'm going to start with A, and we're going to rewrite it so that we have room. Okay, so we have 4 ray with times m raised to the one-fifth power times y raised to the one-fourth power. Keep in mind, all of these are being multiplied together. Okay, since the 4 is not being raised to any power, we're just going to bring it down, 4. Now, m raised to the one-fifth power, we're going to have to work with that. And y raised to the one-fourth power, we're going to have to work with that as well. But keep in mind, all of these are being multiplied together. Starting with the m to the 1 fifth, you're going to bring the 1 down. 5 is going to go outside of your radical. Same thing with the 1 fourth. You're going to bring the 1 down. 4 is going to go to the outside of your radical. So let's start. We have 4, which doesn't get touched. Big radical symbol. 5 goes on the outside. m goes underneath exponent of 1. Now keep in mind, we don't like to have an exponent of 1. We don't write the 1 usually. So we're going to end up fixing this one more step. Let's go on to the y. Big radical symbol. Bring the y in. The 4 goes to the outside. And again, the 1 becomes the exponent. Now we don't like to write the 1. So one more step just to clean this up. 4, big radical. 5 on the outside m on the inside, not putting the 1. Big radical symbol, 4 on the outside, y underneath. And we're done. Let's move on to the next example. Next example, we have 3 times r raised to the 3 fourth power times d raised to the 1 eighth power. Okay, break this apart. Your 3 is not being raised to any power. So it's going to remain the way that it is. Times r, which is raised to 3 fourths power, and then d, which is raised to the 1 eighth power. Okay, let's start working with this. The 3 fourths, you bring the 3 down, 4 goes to the outside. The 1 eighth, you bring the 1 down, the 8 goes to the outside. So rewriting this, 3, which doesn't get touched, big radical, 4 on the outside, r, 3 is now the exponent. Next one, big radical symbol. 8 on the outside, D on the inside, and I'm not going to write the 1. Remember, you don't write the 1, so I'm just going to leave it just like that. Final answer. Okay, we have one more. Let's give myself a little bit of room to write here. Okay, last one. 4 times X raised to the 5 sixth power times p raised to the one-fifth power. The 4 doesn't get touched because it's not being raised to any power. So I'm just going to write 4 times x raised to the 5 sixth power. That will get affected. Times p raised to the one-fifth power. And I'm thinking about that 1. Okay. 
for the 5, 6, the 5 goes down, the 6 goes to the outside of the radical. 1 fifth, 1 goes down, 5 goes to the outside of the radical. So writing our final answer, 4, which didn't get touched, big radical symbol, 6 on the outside, x, 5 on the inside. Next one, big radical symbol, 5 on the outside, p, and I'm not going to write that it's raised to the first power. We don't write the 1. And here we go. All three choices are done. Let's move on. Number three, we're going to solve for V, which means we want to get V by itself. Now notice in this equation, V is being multiplied by M and divided by S. So we're going to have to go through our inverse operations in order to free up V and get it all by itself. That's what it means to solve for V. You want to get V by itself. Okay, let's give us some room to write. D equals capital M V all over S. Okay, keep in mind, our goal is to get V by itself. Now, usually we would start by adding or subtracting whatever is next to the V. But here there's no addition, no subtraction. All we have is multiplication and division. I like to start by getting rid of the denominator. If you have a denominator, you want to start getting rid of it. The S, since you're dividing by S, the inverse operation is to multiply. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to multiply both sides by S. So starting with the right, multiply by s, same thing with the left, multiply by s. Now on the right hand side, you're multiplying by that denominator, so the s's are going to cancel out. On the left side, capital S times D, those are not like terms, so you're just going to put them next to each other. So now it's going to be s times D equals, and what we're left with on the right is a capital M V. Now, in between the M and the V is a little multiplication. M and V are being multiplied together. How do you break that relationship up? You divide. Okay, the opposite of multiplication, division. So what we want is to get the V by itself. So we're going to get rid of the M. Divide both sides by M. On the right, it's going to cancel because that's when you broke up that relationship between the capital M and the V. On the left, since all of these are different terms, all you're going to do is rewrite it. So your final answer, capital S times D all over capital M equals V. And now you've solved it in terms of V. If you don't like looking at it like this, you can rewrite this, V equals capital SD over M. And we're done. So anytime they ask you to solve for a variable and you have several in your equation, use your inverse operations to start getting V or whatever the variable is by itself. Usually, first step is to get rid of any addition or subtraction. And then the next step, if you have a denominator, get rid of the denominator by multiplying. Third step, if your variable is being multiplied by something, here is being multiplied by capital M, divide it out. Always think about your inverse relationships, your inverse operations. Okay, let's keep moving. Number four, consider the following polynomials. Seven times x squared minus four and six x squared plus x plus 12. Part A says find the sum of the polynomials. Sum means you're going to add them. Part B says find the difference of the polynomials. So you're going to subtract. Let's give us some room to write. Okay, let's do part A. We're going to find the sum. So we're going to add these together. And the first step is to write them down. 
So we're going to put 7 times x squared minus 4. Plus, since we're taking the sum, we're adding them together. 6x squared plus x plus 12. Okay, let's start looking at that left polynomial. Because of PEMDAS, first thing that we want to do is we want to get rid of any of the parentheses, if we can. Looking inside of the parentheses, I can't do x squared minus 4. Those aren't like terms. But what I can do is I can distribute the 7, which is outside of my parentheses, to both terms. Remember that 7 is being multiplied by both of the terms inside of the parentheses. So let's start. 7 times your x squared is 7x squared. 7 times negative 4 is negative 28. Okay, so we've simplified that. Let's bring down the rest of it. Plus 6x squared plus x plus 12. Okay, now that we all have this without any parentheses, we're going to start thinking to ourselves, which of these terms can we combine? Which of these terms are like terms? I'm going to start with the highest degree, and that's the x squared. So looking at my x squareds, I have a 7x squared, and I have a 6x squared positive. Okay, since they're both in terms of x squared, what I'm going to do when I add them is I'm just going to add the numbers in front. So 7 plus 6 is 13. 13x squared. Okay, so that's done. Let's take a look at our next largest degree, which is the regular x. I only have one regular x right here, the plus x. So since I have nothing to add it to, I'm just going to bring it down, plus x. Lastly, I'm going to look at my whole numbers. So for my whole numbers, I have negative 28 and positive 12. There's two, way to, two ways to do this. First way is you can look at your number line. And you should have a big, long number line drawn on your paper. And with your number line, you're going to start at negative 28. And you're going to count 12. Since you're adding a positive 12, you're going to count to the right 12 boxes. And you're going to see where you end up. The other way of doing this, if you're adding one positive number and one negative number, you're going to take the sign of the larger one. So 28 is larger than 12. So we're going to take the sign of the 28, which is negative. So I'm going to have a negative answer. The next thing you're going to do after you take the sign of the larger number, you're going to subtract. So we're going to do 28 minus 12. 2 gets subtracted from 8. 8 minus 2 is 6. 1 gets subtracted from 2, which is 1. So we're going to have a negative 16. Now let's just rewrite this all in the same color for me because we're done. We've combined all of the like terms. We didn't leave anything behind. So 13x squared plus x minus 16 is the sum of the two polynomials. Now I'm going to erase this and I'm going to do part B. We're going to subtract, take the difference. So we're going to start by writing down our two polynomials. We're going to start with the first one listed, 7 parentheses, x squared minus 4, minus, because we're taking the difference, 6x squared plus x, plus 12. Okay, same first step. Let's get all of this without parentheses. So we're going to start by distributing the 7. 7 times x squared is 7x squared. 7 times negative 4 
is negative 28. Now, we want to be careful when we're subtracting this polynomial on the right. We're not just subtracting the 6x squared. We want to subtract the entire polynomial. So to protect the polynomial, we're going to put parentheses around it. And that's the tricky part. We want to subtract the whole polynomial, the whole thing. Now, what ends up happening? Well, if we have that negative in front of the parentheses, we're going to have to distribute it. That's not just a negative. That's a negative 1. There's an invisible 1 in front of the parentheses. Now, when we distribute the negative 1, it changes all of the signs inside the parentheses. So watch. Negative 1 times 6x squared is negative 6x squared. Negative 1 times a positive x is a negative x. And negative 1 times a positive 12 is a negative 12. So if we did not protect our polynomial before we started, we would have gotten the wrong answer. With the addition, it didn't matter. When we did the sum, it didn't matter. When you do the difference and you're subtracting more than one term, in this case we have three terms, 6x squared, the x, and the 12, you have to protect it and start by putting it into the parentheses before we start subtracting. Okay, let's keep going. Same thing now that we've gotten rid of all the parentheses, we're going to start combining like terms, starting with our highest degree, which is your x squared. 7x squared and negative 6x squared. 7 minus 6 is 1. So we're going to have 1x squared. We know that when we write our final answer, we're not even going to put the 1. So keep that in mind. Next, let's go to our x. We have a negative x right here. There's no other x's on the board. No regular x's. So we're just going to write minus x. And then the last step, let's take a look at our whole numbers. Negative 28, negative 12. When you're combining two numbers that have the same sign, like two positives, and in this case two negatives, you're going to keep the sign. So in this case, you're going to keep the negative, And you're going to add the terms together. So 28 plus 12. 8 plus 2 is 10. Bring down the 0, put 1. 1 plus 2 plus 1 is 4. So this is going to become a negative 40. If you're concerned about that, what you're going to do is you're going to draw a big number line. You're going to start at negative 28, and you're going to subtract 12, which means you're going to count to the left 12 boxes. Counting to the left, 12 boxes, you would end up at negative 40. Same thing. Do whatever you feel confident with. Now our final answer, we're going to rewrite it because we're going to get rid of that 1 in front of the x squared. So final answer, x squared minus x minus 40. And we're done with number 4. Number five, we're going to graph. Now, looking at this equation, we need to first think about what type, of what type of graph is it? Is it a parabola? Is it an exponential function? Or is it simply a line? In this case, it's a line. And the way that we know that is we see the x is just going to have, well, let me change that. The x has a degree of 1. It's not being raised to the second power. It's not as an exponent. It has a degree of 1. So that means we have a line. Either a line is going to go up or a line is going to go down. In order to figure that out, we want to put our line into y equals mx plus b format. The reason we want to put in this format is because having the slope, which is your m, and having the y-intercept, which is your b, is all you need in order to graph. Okay. I'm going to rewrite this equation, and you will too, and let's go ahead and put this into y equals mx plus b format. y minus 2 equals 4 times 
x plus 1. Okay, first step is to start getting rid of the parentheses. We don't want any parentheses. We want it to just be y equals mx plus b. All right, so to start, we're going to take the 4, we're going to distribute it to both terms inside the parentheses. So now we're going to get y minus 2 equals 4 times x is 4x. Four, 4 times 1 is positive 4. We're getting closer, but we still need to get rid of that negative 2 next to the y. Okay, to get rid of that negative 2, inverse operation, we're going to add 2. Make sure you do it to both sides. The negative 2 and the positive 2 cancel. So now we're going to have y equals, bring down the 4x, because you can't add 2 to something that has an x value. You need to have like terms. So y equals 4x. Four plus two is six. Now that this is in y equals form, we have the slope of our line, which is m, and we have our y-intercept. Our y-intercept, which is b, is the first thing that we're going to graph. So I'm going to go to my graph. I'm going to put a point at six on the y-axis. And now I'm going to start looking at my slope to figure out how am I going to count Remember, slope is equal to rise over run. So you want to look at it as a fraction to figure out how much you're going to count up and over. So let's take a look at the 4. And we're going to turn it into a fraction. The way we do that is we put it over 1. So now your rise is going to tell you, do you go up or you go down? Up is a positive movement. Down is a negative movement. Your run is going to tell you if you go right or if you go left. Going right is positive. Going left is negative. Now notice both the top and the bottom are positive. So that means we're going to count up for our rise. And our run of 1 says we're going to go to the right 1 box. Go to your graph. We're going to start at your B value, at your y-intercept of 6. Count up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, and write 1. Bam. So we're right here at 1, 10. Now, we don't have any more graph left. So we want to start figuring out, well, how do we go the other direction? Because we know our line is going to continue. So now, take a look at your slope. To go the other direction, you're going to flip both of these. Flip the direction that you're counting. So now we're going to count 4 down and 1 to the left. In other words, these are both going to be negative movements. And since two negatives are going to become a positive anyway, we're not actually changing the slope. We're just rewriting it so we can count the other direction. Okay, start back at 6. Now you're going to count down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 and right one, I'm sorry, and left one. Plot a point. Do it again. Down four. Left one. Plot a point. Keep going until you have no more graph left. Once all of your points are plotted, you can now connect your line. Okay, that's the best I could do. Okay, so that's going to be my line. I'll even highlight it so you could see it better. Okay, so we graphed that equation, which turned, to be out, turned out to be a linear equation by first putting it into y equals mx plus b format, plotting the b, which is your y-intercept of 6, and then looking at our slope and figuring out the rise and the run from the slope so we can figure out some other points on our line, and then we connect it. Let's keep moving.